Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, season two is here of a whole new ball game. Alex Fuse and Vinny Pasquantino back with all of you. We're back. We're back. Season two is here. How exciting. I mean, look at Alex's background right now. He's got blankets. He's got a bookshelf. He's got everything you need. Oh, man, what a time to be alive. The offseason is somewhat upon us now, and we have begun season two. Alex, how do you feel about that? I'm excited. Uh, great to be back. I was hoping you weren't going to call attention to my background, but that's fine. Um, and, um, I mean, at least it's better than yours. Yeah, you know, I've got two pictures hanging on my wall. and I also Wait, have, What are the pictures of? I have no idea. I don't know what they are. They, I think Ryan bought them at Target. Um, okay. So, and then I bought this clock over there right? Uh, in my living room. So Why is there a chair on top? Oh, is that for the computer? That is for the computer. But, yeah, this, this clock's right there, so I, I always know what time it is. So what a time. What a time. You get it? Yeah, literally, what a time. Uh, but, Alex, you and I both had pretty eventful years, huh? So we're not going to get into those specifically, but, you know, Tell everybody kind of what you were up to this year, because I think everybody knows what I was up to. I was I was playing. Um, so that was it. I, I played baseball this year, which is very exciting compared to what happened in 2020 when it comes to baseball. So right. I, was I played. Uh, right. so what did you What did you do, Alex? So I was in Texas for six months and then I did a podcast with, as uh, we all know, two time guests, Jackson and Ryan. So we worked with uh, Jackson and I got to call some high school baseball games down in Texas and job shadowed uh, with the Round Rock Express, which is the AAA affiliate of the Texas Rangers. And uh, it was so much fun in Texas. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I miss I miss the uh, Texas climate. Uh, it's a little different than New York. I'm sure, Benny, you're in Nashville right now. What's the weather right now in Nashville? Uh, it's currently pretty much every day. It varies between 70 and 85 degrees and sunny. So it All is right. Beautiful. Well, tomorrow in Albany, New York, is going to be a brisk 53 degrees. <laughs> so we are back wearing winter jackets even before the first day of October. Yeah, I mean, some people would call 53 more of a sweatshirt hoodie day, not a winter jacket, but a hey, each well, own. Well, fine. Like, 53 and windy is, like, cold when last week was 90, so. Oh, that's true. But season two begins with a bang, Alex. We have one of my best friends on the show, a current member of the New York Yankees organization. An old Dominion University alumni member, Kyle Battle. It's a very exciting interview, and he doesn't do a lot of interviews, so it's really exciting to kind of uh, get him to a point where he's a little bit more uncomfortable than he normally is because he doesn't really, he's not the biggest talker in the world. So it's always fun seeing him in that kind of environment because he's always got something good to say. So it's always nice hearing from him, um, seeing what he's got to say. So it's a really cool interview from somebody who you're not going to hear a lot of interviews from, not yet at least. And, you know, as he climbs up, he'll be doing a lot more interviews, I'm sure of it. But, you know, it was exciting to get him. He had just finished work, and he was willing to give us a few minutes. So, you know, it was really exciting. Yeah, great job by me to get Kyle on the show. So, uh, just Yeah, and Alex is throwing himself that nod because it absolutely did not happen. Um, we worked together to get Kyle on the podcast, and it's, a good, it's good teamwork going into season two. But there's a few things that are going to be a little bit different this year. Uh, do you want them to tell – do you want – yourself to tell everybody Alex or do you want me to tell them what might be different coming into season two I think you should tell them so I am going to the Dominican Republic to play um more baseball from I my kind of little season is going to be ranging from October 12th through the middle of November towards the end of November so from that time we will still be releasing once a week shows but I will not be the host starting from you know that week in October so, Alex, what do you have for the people when I am not your co-host on the show? We will be having surprise co-hosts every single week. So, as you know, um, we have some pretty cool connections throughout the baseball world. So, I'll keep you in some suspense um, as we get going. Um, I don't want to announce anyone just yet. Uh, yeah, Alex will be throwing a lot of dot, dot, dots around Twitter for anybody who uh, who follows him because you know that's what he loves to do. He's going to throw you a lot of dot, dot, dots over the next few weeks. But, Alex, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go ahead and get this show started. Welcome to the show, Kyle Battle. Well, Kyle, congratulations on an epic season and 
more importantly, congratulations on being the first guest of season two of a whole new ball game. So Kyle, welcome into the show. How are you feeling today? Tell everybody where you're at work right now. How exciting for you, but tell everybody what you're up to. Oh man, thank, first of all, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be on the first episode of this legendary podcast. But yeah, I'm at DBAT right now, repping the hat right here. Just started a job working some lessons down here in Virginia Beach. Um, just uh, passing off some baseball knowledge to whoever I can. Uh, and then Vinny called me while I was finishing up at work, hit me with the random, oh, can you be on the podcast in like five minutes? I was like, sure, why not? I guess we'll do it. I'm, on, I'm honored to be here, though. Yeah, yeah, that's on me for not making it as honorable as it could be. But uh, just to be clear, Kyle is not on the clock right now. He is done with work, so he's taking time out of his own day not of DBAT stage to talk to us here. So that is super important. But if you're in the area in Virginia Beach and you want to get lessons from Kyle Battle himself, he's there. Go sign up at DBAT for that. But Kyle, what a year for you. Uh, you go into the year, you're a fifth year senior at Old Dominion. You, we'll get into some numbers here in a second, but you know, you play really, really well uh, to a point where you're an absolute legend in the Quad City River Bandits locker room right now because we were watching <laughs> Old Dominion games all the time. And you always just happen to hit big home runs and big hits. So everybody knows who you are there. But then you, you know, you parlay that season into getting picked up by the Yankees. Um, and then you go into the complex season, um, the rookie ball season, where you have a really good year and you eventually get a call up to low A. For the Tampa, how do you say the name of the team, Kyle? I don't even know how to say this. <laughs> uh, Tampa Tarpons. The Tampa Tarpons. I was going to say something completely different. So I was not going to go with Tarpons. Uh, so I'm glad I didn't say it. But, you know, kind of tell us how the year was and how, you know, how did that feel going through kind of a whirlwind of different things this year? Oh, I mean, it, I'm telling everyone that uh, with COVID happening, it was kind of unfortunate, obviously, for everyone. But, uh I tell everyone I have no regrets coming back to ODU and uh, playing out this last year, and it was a blast. We had one of the best seasons in ODU history. Uh, everyone was playing well. We just fed off each other. And uh, that season didn't end the way we wanted it to, but we did make some ODU history, and that was awesome. So that was a great um, great kind of turning point going into trying to move into prof my professional career. Uh, I put everything I had on the table at ODU, so I'm so proud of that. And then uh, I'm 100% grateful to be be able to say I got picked up by the Yankees. Um, that's obviously like that's the baseball program that everyone dreams of playing for. And I have the privilege to be able to pull in the pinstripe. So that is that right there is surreal. And it still kind of hasn't hit me, honestly. Uh, but it's been awesome just being around the complex, seeing a bunch of legendary people, stuff like that. And uh I'm just ready to ready to keep it going as long as I can. Obviously, every college baseball player's dream is to either get signed or drafted and play pro ball. When you were in the fight every single day at Old Dominion before the season wrapped up, how often were you thinking of what the next steps were? Were you just focused on that season at Old Dominion, your, your fifth year? Uh, so I would say I was honestly really just focused on my last year at ODU. Uh, with COVID happening and – everything that I've been through through my college career, it was kind of like, um, honestly, if someone wanted me, like I feel like they would have picked me up by now. So I was just like, you know, this is my last year maybe playing baseball ever. So I'm going to just throw it all out on the table. And I think that mentality right there helped me, especially on the mental side, kind of just brush all the challenges off. And really our whole team kind of took that mentality. And I think that's why we were so successful. Like we were just out there joking around, having fun playing baseball. And that kind of elevated our games to a whole nother level. So I think that mentality of just, you know what, whatever happens, happens. I think that actually played a huge role in the, uh, where I am right now. Yeah, and that was just an unbelievably fun team to watch. I mean, that you watch that team, you fall in love with all the, you know, that's just a group of characters on a baseball field. And I, I can attest to it how much fun that team was to watch. So kind of when we dig into you more a little bit, Kyle, and anybody who doesn't know, Kyle should have absolutely been playing professional baseball for the past two years. But, you know, he got screwed over a little bit when it comes to injuries. And right, he's not going to be the one to complain to you about that at all. I will complain for him um, about that because of, you know, how, how we all think it should have happened versus how it happened. But at the end of the day, 
he's in professional baseball now, and that's all you ask for, right? It's just a just a shot. So freshman year, you hit 341 with a 419 OBP. Then you go through, you know, the two injury years, right? You come back your senior year in 2020, and over the course of 15 games, you hit 375 with a 493 OBP and a 1.189 OPS, which are just absolutely <laughs> ridiculous numbers. And this is while he's striking out at almost half the amount of times he's walking. And then, Kyle, not only that, so you don't get picked up in the in the five-round 2020, you know, COVID year, right? Um, so you come back for your senior year, and at least in my opinion, it looked like you gave everything to the program of Old Dominion. You kind of lost yourself in it, if that makes sense. You, you were not worrying about Kyle Battle. You were worrying about Old Dominion. And when I read these numbers, it's just going to be even more ridiculous. As a leadoff hitter, Kyle hit 322 with a 476 OBP with a 1.164 OPS with 18 homers with 54 walks to 37 strikeouts. So Kyle, those are just, I mean, that's one of the best, one of the best seasons in college baseball this year. So if one of the best college baseball seasons, especially coming from a leadoff hitter, the fact that you were able to put up some of those numbers. So what was it throughout those five years, right? That you were, you, you weren't the biggest power hitter the first few years. And then all of a sudden, this year, it's just an absolute power outrage from you. Just insane. So what was the difference um, this year? Uh, first, I like the point where you said I kind of got lost in the program. I think that's an amazing way to put it because I was just – we were just trying to have fun, win games. And when we saw late in the year that, like, we actually had a shot, like we were in the rankings for the last half of the year, it was just like, all right, like, let's go. Let's, let's make it to Omaha. Like, we can do this. But – no, I think um, kind of me going through the injury struggles and stuff like that, that uh, had to go through the whole rehab process with that. So I took that time to really actually get in the weight room a lot. I started lifting, lifting extra more than uh, just our team lifts and stuff like that. Um, just I was just enjoying the process, honestly. I just wanted to come back stronger than ever and – I think that paired with just being lost in, in the program and loving the guys on the team, I think that that together uh, boosted boosted my abilities from what I did previous years to uh, the great senior year I had. Talking about just boosting your ability, what do you think changed most between your first year playing at Old Dominion and your last year? What do you think was the biggest difference in how you improved most? Uh, along with just gaining strength, stuff like that, uh, definitely knowledge for the game. Even when uh, when Vinny was still here with me, just talking with him about baseball, I learned so much. And just l learning little things that, like, you wouldn't even necessarily think about, like, when you're in high school and stuff like that. Like, now I look at it, I was like, wow, like, that's actually really important. I really wish I would have knew this a lot sooner. Just, like, approach at the plate, uh, how pitchers work, you stuff like that. Um, so just – being more efficient with that stuff, that almost made college baseball, like my fifth year, like it made it the game really slow. So I would say that that also played a huge role in there. So so then after you get picked up by the Yankees, you go down to Florida and you kind of start working out in mini camps or whatever they called it. And then you get assigned to the complex league Yankees and – you basically just continue what you were doing in college. Uh, you have a 162 weighted runs created plus, which is ridiculous. And you still walked more than you struck out with good power numbers again. So kind of were you able to keep the game slow when you moved on to professional baseball? And for anybody who doesn't know, like a lot of people say rookie ball is one of the harder places to hit because it's a lot of guys who throw absolute fuel and have no clue where the ball is going, right? That's a huge learning process. And for college guys, you come in and you play in it so you can get your feet wet in professional baseball a little bit. So it's a little bit of a mix of different kinds of players. So Kyle, what was, what was that experience like? It was only 20 games for you, right? But you know, the draft was later this year. So you weren't able to experience even like a short season. It was, a, it was even shorter than that. So what was that experience like in the complex league for you? Uh, it was awesome. I loved it. Uh, yeah, we came in, kind of went through a couple of weeks of just working out, getting another staff, stuff like that. Uh, just regular, like, practice days, I guess. 
I haven't been to spring training, but I'm assuming that's how spring training would be. Um, and then we got called up to the complex league and to me, it was, a, it was hard at first. Like I was not doing well at all. I think I was hitting somewhere in the one, one something for a good amount of time. And then it was actually, this is actually be funny because one day I was talking to one of my buddies on the team and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just pretend like this is college. This is college baseball now. And that's actually when everything, everything started to start to click and the uh, numbers started to boost up. So I, I take it back to the mentality I had in college. It was like, all right, like today could be the last day I'm playing baseball. We don't know. I'm going to just have fun and leave it all on the field. And once I adapted that same mentality I had in college, that's when everything, everything started to jump up again. So I think one of the most important things you just said there, and it's something that uh, it's something that you experienced and it wasn't your fault, right? Is this year could have been your last year playing baseball. Um, Mm -hmm. You go in and don't have a good senior year, right? chances are you could potentially be done right now. So, you know, you just kind of said it, but does that mentality almost help you now because you know kind of what that felt like and you, you know, you're playing for something every day. You're out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I I would say that definitely helps. Uh, Unknowingly though, like I didn't want until you said that, I haven't thought about that, but that's a great mentality to take in the pro ball. Um, we have a mental skills coach with the Yankees. You see, actually, we had a conversation about this, and you said treat treat every day as like a one day contract. So each day I'm playing for my contract. Um, I'm gonna just leave leave everything out there, control what you control, like your effort, attitude, stuff like that. And uh, if you go about that the right way, then eventually the results will come. It's gonna be a struggle, but you just have to continue to work through that, and it'll come eventually. Mm-hmm. Has your appreciation for the game changed at all by being in pro ball for a season? Uh, I would say maybe a little bit. Like I'm in, I'm enjoying just being around like a bunch of high prospect guys. Like I had the privilege to play with Jason Dominguez, uh, <laughs> play with him in center field. So I actually really appreciate baseball right now, especially sitting out with COVID, having a senior year, going through that, having the great year we had at ODU, and then moving into pro ball, I think my appreciation for baseball is at an all-time high right now. So I'm excited to take that into next year. Like, I'm here trying to spread baseball knowledge to younger guys. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just waiting to be around the game as much as possible. So I would say just this whole past year has just elevated my love for baseball even more. So, So – the question that I'm sure everybody's been waiting for me to ask is, and if you don't know, now you know, Kyle is a certified beard guy. He grows a great, he grows a great beard, and only in the fall have I ever seen him without a beard because we weren't allowed to grow beards in Old Dominion uh, until we got our grades up. So, Kyle, you're with the New York Yankees. The New York Yankees have a rule where you cannot have a beard. You may have a mustache, which you are, you are sporting right now, but mm-hmm. – how does that feel knowing how great of a beard you have um, that you can't have it and you can only have a mustache? Uh, at first, I was a little hurt. Um, for everyone who doesn't know, I, I don't know if the other seasons show up. I was on last season or the college baseball. You can go check out the beard there. But at first, I was like, oh, man, I got to shave the beard. Like, I didn't even think about that. And I think after about maybe like two weeks, it just became second nature. Like, I got used to seeing myself without a beard and – uh like I said, before we got on the call, I started growing this mustache out like three weeks ago because I was like, you know what? I'm about to leave. I haven't seen myself with just a mustache. Let's try it out. And then that was around the same time where I was like, you know what? College mentality. So the hits started coming. I was like, you know, what? I got to keep the mustache now. So we'll see if I keep it going in the, in the next year. But yeah. Do you, do you have to shave every day to keep it clean shaven? Uh, it's every two days. Every you can get yeah, every two days. If it's uh, if I shave like early in the morning, then I'll have to shave the next morning. But uh, sometimes I like shave at the complex, so then I could get away with not shaving the next day. But yeah, yeah it's it's max two days, and I have to do it. Yeah, see, Alex has never shaved in his life. Not once <laughs> never shaved, and he has a, just an absolute clean face. That's uh, I shave every morning. But um, <laughs> you like the mustache or no? Uh, I hey, if the mustache brings hits, that's all that matters. I mean, yeah, that, if it's bringing hits, like I'll I'll rock it. But I'm not a not a big fan of it. 
we'll see. I've gotten mixed reviews about it, um, especially from people back at ODU, specifically like Kristen and them, everybody in the academic center. Uh, I've been getting mixed reviews, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm about, I'm about to grow the beard back out. It's in the process right now, so we'll see when uh, – when the season comes around next year, if I'm keeping the stash or not. And then one of the last questions I have for you in particular, what do you think you love most about the game? We talk about your appreciation for it, but what about your love for the game? Has that changed at all? Oh, that's actually a good question. Um, I think, honestly, I, I don't know why. But, like, I played every other sport known ever. Like, ice hockey was my first sport for everyone who doesn't know. But baseball was the last sport I picked up. And for some reason, I, I don't know what it is about it, but it just caught my eye. And it's been like that ever since. I think just I love just the concept of it and competing, just knowing that, like, it's an individual battle. But, like, you have a group behind you that you need to work with also. So, I don't know. That's actually a really good question, and that's probably the best answer I can give. I just know that the love is still there. Like, it had, I haven't lost it since I was nine years old after I picked up a baseball bat for a, officially the first time for a team. Good for you, Alex. You stumped him. You absolutely stumped him. Episode one, and you asked <laughs> such a good question, he couldn't answer it. That a baby. Well, I should have saved that for the – I should have saved it for balls and strikes. Yeah, yeah for exactly. Real. You absolutely should have. But, Kyle, my last question before we move on to balls and strikes is, so you're moving into your first your first offseason, and it, this one's just going to be tough to answer just because you don't know yet. But what are kind of personally your goals as you move into the offseason and into next season? What, what are you looking for yourself to be doing? Uh, I mean, for myself, I just want to – Right now, it's just kind of take a little break. Uh, the body is definitely feeling it. I, what, around 80, 80 something games with college and pro ball. This is the first time I've done that. So just kind of give the mind a little break. And uh, with the Yankees, we have, we had our meetings before we left. We have our personal individual goals. So mainly it's going to be just kind of staying to work, staying, staying with that same mentality. Um, that I brought from ODU. Uh, I just want to continue that momentum moving in the, every single year. Like if I can continue the momentum I brought from this year into next season and then keep it going, uh, I should be in a good spot and set myself up a, in a good position uh, moving forward. Well, Kyle, this is our favorite, well, my favorite part, I don't know about Vinny's, of the podcast. It's called Balls and Strikes. Vinny and I compete against each other. You decide if the question is a strike or a ball, the first person to get a strikeout wins. I guess I will start. Um, the first question I have for you, if you could face any current major league pitcher, who would you choose and why? I'll say that's definitely a strike. Uh, wait, strike's a good question, right? Yeah. Okay, that's definitely a strike. And I'm going to say DeGrom. Just because right on right matchup, everyone is saying that he's just impossible to hit. I actually just want to see it in the box. I probably no shot that like I'm gonna actually have a real few chance to get a hit at this point in my career. But I actually really want to see him in the box. He's got disgusting stuff, and I want to see if I can just go up there and compete. Like I love to compete, so I want to put myself in the box and compete with him and try and. Draw a walk, get a hit, get on base, anything. If he hits me, fine. I'll take it. But definitely DeGrom. All right. So I'm ahead here 0-1, so I'll go again. I'm going to get ahead 0-2. If you didn't get signed, what do you think you would be doing right now? <laughs> oh, man. That's a – I might have to get on a ball. I don't know. So if it all right, so if it's like a bad question, just a ball. Yeah, you don't have to answer it. You could answer it, but you don't have to. I think I'm gonna say I'm gonna say ball, and the answer would be still trying to play baseball. Simple as that. Love the game. I would just still be trying to play. 
All right, Kyle, my first question, and I'm not just going to ask baseball questions or anything. If you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be and why? <laughs> I'll give that one a strike. Red oak, the, or the, no, the redwood, because redwoods, they're massive. Like, those are legendary trees. I'll give that one a strike. Bang. All right, Kyle. All right, I'm going to ask the question for the show, which I may have already asked you a few months ago, but I'm going to ask anyway because it's just, it's fan favorite. And I'm not even gonna give you options, you're just gonna have to answer it. What material of cup do you prefer to drink out of? You've got a Coke or a Dr. Pepper or whatever, and you're pouring it into something for you to drink out of. What kind of cup are you using? Examples, glass, plastic, styrofoam, whatever it may be. Yeah, okay, I'll give that a strike. This is plastic. Plastic with ice. Plastic. Wow, God. Plastic, plastic with ice. It's cheap. You can drop it. It's not going to break. Plastic is reliable. Oof. Yeah. I like it. I'm a glass guy myself, but I like it. Man, Alex is stumped over there. He's pissed. Alex is angry that you gave that a <laughs> strike. Um, let's see, Kyle. I know the answer to this, but I want the people to know. When you eventually get a dog – what kind of dog is it going to be? Oh. Are you, do you know this answer, though? I think I do. Because it's an oddball answer. So, hey, if I give you a strike, that means you win this. That's correct. That is correct. I would win. I don't know. Should I give you a strike for a question that you already know the answer? No. <laughs> Oh, uh, all right. I'm going to have to ball that one. I'm going to make this interesting because I just want to see what Alex has, to be honest. And the answer to that question is I don't I don't know yet. Oh, there's, there's options, but I'm not 100 percent yet. Wait, Vinny, what did you think his answer was going to be? We'll talk about it off the off the air. Oh. <laughs> OK. All right. So we're each at one one. All right. When does the at bat start for you? That's a that's a good question. Strike. Uh, the at bat for me starts well when that pitcher gets on the mound. So if it's a starter, like I'm watching everyone that hits before me. Uh, reliever, I'm watching everyone that hits before me. I'm just watching what the pitcher's doing. So mm -hmm. it's it's when when he steps on the mound or when we're back in the dugout um, to hit. All right. I like it. I like it. All right. So I'm ahead here, one and two. I'm going for the uh, the Grom pitch right here, the out pitch. Um, let's see. I don't want to do a baseball question. I've done every baseball question. What If you were trying to impress someone by cooking a meal, what would you cook? I actually do know the answer to this question because I know what Kyle cooks. <laughs> it would be P.F. Chang's orange chicken that's frozen, sold from Food Lion. Those, those are fire. <laughs> those are fire. Um, I'm gonna go ball. Ball. I don't have a like go-to meal as of now, but I will work on that. I'm gonna come up with a go-to meal and that. Also, I just want to hear goal. That's a new offseason goal. All right, we'll write that down. Perfect. Kyle, I'm, uh, so I'm not going to tell you what I am in the count right now because I don't want you to answer this question artificially, whether you want me to win or not. So um, – Pardon the count. Uh, I'm building a wall, Kyle. I'm mm -hmm. building a wall. You are a brick in the wall. Which brick are you in the wall? Are you at the bottom? Am I, am I starting with you? Are you at the top? Am I finished with you? Or are you in the middle? Where? What brick are you? <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> that is the worst question I've ever heard in my life. I'm sorry. I, got, I have to ball that one. That's because you don't have an answer. I, I mean, I do have an answer, but I'm not going to tell it to you because that, <laughs> that is actually the wildest question. I'm going to let you guys know what's happening outside of my house right now. Bear the dog has found a squirrel in the yard, and he's chasing it around the yard. Uh, but it, go ahead, Alex. 
All right. What is, um, hmm. If you could do, that's <laughs> such a bad question. All right, this is good. This is a bad question. But if you could do a puzzle, what kind of puzzle would you choose? You know, if if Alex asked that question before you just asked your question, Vinny, I would give you a strike. Oh. Yeah. I don't I, I I blanked and I saw a puzzle across the room in the basement and that's it. I don't know. All right, like Vinny, there's no way you don't get a strike here. <laughs> Oh, no, there's definitely a way because at this point I'm trying to think of the worst questions I could possibly <laughs> ask. <sighs> All right, Kyle, when you were – think about last year when you are still in school, even though I know you were in all my grad classes, so all those sucked anyway. When you were coming into college, what was the class you were least looking forward to and what was the one you were most looking forward to when you were coming into college? This, right. is gonna, this is going to dive deep into Kyle's brain here for all the people listening. That is actually a pretty good question. I'm going to take it back. I'll give that a strike because we're going to go back. We're going to take this back to Meredith. Meredith, when I chose sport management, she told me I had to take uh, accounting, accounting one and two, or 101 and 102. That was definitely the, like, least, like, I don't want to do this at all. Like, Accounting sounds terrible. Like, I'm about to change my major. But made it through it somehow. And then, oh, my favorite. Honestly, remember that – you remember that IT class we were in? I wasn't in, I don't think, but you took it. Yeah, you were. It was me, you, me, you, and Devin. That was our trio for the people we know. That class was actually pretty fun because we were – Oh, the one where we sat in the, in the new building – yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would say that I actually enjoyed that class. It was a good time. We were kind of doing some random, random stuff. It wasn't too much work. So definitely, but no, worst, worst class accounting. If you don't have to take, don't have to take it, don't take it. But for everybody at home who doesn't want to go into accounting, don't take accounting. That's basically yeah. what I just said. <laughs> Wait, so did Vinny win? I won. I won. I'm the first winner of season two. I'm currently 1-0, so that is a huge win for me. Um, Alex, before we sign off, what else do we potentially have for Kyle, if anything? Um, well, where can the people follow you on social media? Blow yourself up, Kyle. Tell everybody where they can find you and what you bring to the timeline. Uh, you know, Kyle Battle 04 at uh... – on every single social media site. That's the username I use. Uh, I mean, follow me. You see some interesting content, uh, maybe some crazy stuff that Vinny's doing. Uh, so, yeah, Kyle Battle 04 on every single platform. Go give your boy a follow. Probably follow you back. I'm generous go, about that. Go give him a follow. And if you're a Yankees fan or really just a baseball fan in general, I really implore you to go watch Kyle play wherever he is next year because it's a lot of freaking fun to watch. So I really hope somebody listening to this is like, yeah, I'm going to go watch Kyle play next year. You're going to be paying a lot of money to watch him play here in the next few years. So somebody go do it now while you have you know an easier chance to do it or else you can just catch him on TV. So, Kyle, thank you so much for joining uh, this was a lot of fun. Season two is off to a hot start, and we have you to thank for that, Kyle. So, again, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, boys. Always good talking to you all. What an interview with the one and only Kyle Battle. Yeah, it was a great time, and I just had a really, I had a really fun time catching up with a friend. So I don't know how you felt about it, but I had a great time. I thought it was a really good interview. I thought he gave some really great insight into kind of what he's gone through the last few years and what he's going through now. So – just a exciting time and it's exciting to be interviewing people again and kind of being talking about what they care about, why they do what they do. So I thought it was a really cool interview. Um, I'm happy we were able to bring it to the people. Did you miss this, Vinny? Oh, I missed it so much. I miss you and I talking every day, trying to figure out what we're going to do and everything. So it's nice to have our friendship more back in my life because during the season, it's a little bit discombobulated with everything that's going on. So now with a little bit more downtime, it's nice to talk to you a little bit more, Alex, and see you face-to-face -face via Zoom. I wish it was the same for me. 
Um, but um, I, I think just in general, it was great to be back uh, with Kyle, uh, number one, and uh, I guess with you as well. Uh, but um, a great first episode back. Yeah, it was great, and we've got more to come. So we'll be releasing another episode next week. Stay tuned for who that guest will be, and, you know, everybody keep on listening because we're having a great time. That's right. That's right. Follow us on all social media platforms as well. But for Vinny, I'm Alex Fuse. Have a great rest of your week, and we will be seeing you next week.